Okay, so we've opened up the new file. We're going to be drawing elevations in AutoCAD today. All right, so we've opened up our new file. The first thing that we did was we typed in units to change them to architectural units. And then from there, we typed in XR to bring up our external references menu. Okay, so just a second ago, we clicked on the little drop down menu. And the option that we're going to choose today is attach DWG that will allow us to bring or attach our floor plan, which we'll use for reference. Uh, when drawing our elevations, okay? You have a few other options as well. They will all come into handy in the future. Uh, one of them is attach image. Should you need to attach a JPEG or a PNG into your AutoCAD file, maybe you want to trace over it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I do it all the time when maybe my boss will hand sketch or hand draw an elevation and sometimes I will simply trace over it to kind of work towards the final product, okay? Um, the other one that you'll probably use quite a bit is attach PDF, uh, very similar to attaching an image, but maybe you've already drawn a, uh, an elevation or a floor plan and you want to bring it in as a reference, you can do that as well. The nice thing about using the external references manager is that once you bring in your drawing and let's say you go back to your floor plan at a later date and you make changes, as soon as you open up this file again, it's, you're going to get a little message in the corner that says your floor plan. Uh, AutoCAD file has been updated. Do you want to reload it? You would hit yes and it'll automatically change that reference file on your elevation sheet so that you can see the changes that were made. Okay, so very similar to InDesign when you uh, when you bring in um, different images, okay, and then maybe you make some edits to them whether it be a Photoshop file or something similar, uh, it will automatically update it inside your InDesign file after you've made some changes. Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and click on attach DWG and then from there I'm going to go ahead and find my floor plan file. All right, so let's see here. Give me just one second, find this floor plan. Okay, so cabin floor plan base. I'm going to go ahead and hit open and you're going to get a menu that looks like this. Okay, it says attach external reference and it's asking you how do you want to do that. Okay. Um, for my scale, I'm not going to check anything because I want it to come in at full scale. If I was to check this box, it would allow me to adjust the scale as I brought it in. Sometimes that is useful if, for example, you're bringing in like a, uh, you know, a civil file. A lot of the times I will bring in a, a file for my civil engineer and they're not the same units. So I have to be able to scale them into uh, a, different, a different unit of measurement. Okay, the next box that, I, that we have already checked is going to be uh, the insertion point. I'm going to go ahead and leave that check and that will allow me to determine where I insert my floor plan. Okay, so really everything that it shows as it by default when this message pops up is okay. We're going to leave everything as is. And then from there we're going to go ahead and hit okay. All right, and you can see that my floor plan is up here in the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and there we will have my floor plan. Notice that when I click on the floor plan that it acts a little bit differently than if we were than if we were uh, working on it from our other file. Okay so right now this is my main floor plan file. I can click on it and I will be able to edit uh, any of the different lines that we've created. But here in my new drawing I can't click on anything because it's just a reference file. Okay. So if I want to make changes to this, I would go back to my original cabin floor plan file and I would make my changes, okay? So for example, let's just do a couple, a little quick change. Let's just say we went, we went back at a later time. Let me click on my exterior walls. Let's just say we added this little, this little room to our, to our floor plan, okay? From there, if I saved it, and then I went back to my drawing one. Notice down at the very bottom it says external file reference has changed. If I click on this little link, it will now bring in the changes that I had made to that floor plan. Okay, so it becomes a very efficient way of working. Where you see this used most often is when you have, maybe I have a civil file for my civil consultant. I have all these different files that were sent to me by multiple consultants. Well, I have them all into one drawing. Okay, so each one of my consultants may be working on a, on a specific drawing, but they maybe at one point they need to all be shown uh, in one file. So by doing that, everybody can work on their individual files and then send in updates as they are needed. And all I got to do is just drag that update into the file that it's uh, that the, all of the base files are stored in and it'll automatically always update 
my sheets appropriately. Okay? So that's just a little bit of how that works. Yeah? So for mine, it says that it's frozen and I'm not able to do anything on it. It says the selected layer cannot be made for current data. Um, check up at your layers and make sure that they're all active. Okay? Mm -hmm. But we'll come back and look at it in, in just a second. Okay? If that, if that doesn't, that's not the trick. All right, so I just deleted that little room as I don't actually really need that. I'm going to save it again, go back to my drawing. It's telling me again that it has changed, and now I have that, uh, that little box is gone. Okay, I'm going to move this up just a little bit to kind of get this uh, right up here. Okay, notice that my topography is actually here as well, or in this file as well. It's just currently... Uh, turned off. All right. So from here, we can start drawing our elevation. All right. And what we're going to end up doing here in just a few seconds is we're going to end up copying over this floor plan uh, three or, or three more times so that we can draw each of the sides. But the tool that we're going to focus on primarily today is going to be the ray tool. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at the ray tool and also construction lines. So if we type in the word uh, layer, we can go ahead and open up our layer properties manager. All right, and we're going to go ahead and create a new layer uh, in this file called uh, ray lines. Okay, and what these lines are going to be used for are just simply reference lines. Okay, and uh, the nice thing about a ray line is that it draws the line in basically an infinite direction. Okay, so you'll see as soon as I draw that, but as soon as I point where I want to start the ray line and I give it a direction, it will draw an infinite line used as reference. Okay, uh, and what we're going to do with this ray line is we're going to go over to the far right and we are going to click on this little printer so that you see the little circle with the line through it. So what this is going to become is this is going to become a non-printing layer. Okay, so we can put as many of these lines on our screen as we want, and we're not going to have to worry about them ever printing. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a red line just so that it's a little bit more visible <clears throat> on my screen. Okay, so from there I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, so we've created a new layer called ray line, and we've changed the layer to red and we've also changed this to a non-printing layer. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer for my south elevation. Okay, We're going to learn how to uh, create some new layers for our elevations a little bit later, but for now we're just going to draw them all in just a single layer and then we'll go back and we'll look at how we can create some depth in our elevations and how we would determine uh, what color lines we would use for what part of the elevations, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and call this south elevation. I'm going to assume that my north elevation is my top, my right elevation is my east, south, and west, okay? So I'm going to create a layer for south elevation. I'm going to go ahead and just make this white for now. All right, and I'm going to make this a printing layer, okay? I don't want this to be a non-printing layer like my ray lines, okay? So from there, I can go ahead and move forward. I'm going to go ahead and X out of my layers command, and we can start to analyze our floor plan, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type in, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to change our layer to the ray line layer that we just created, okay? We're going to go ahead and type in R-A-Y for ray. Okay, and I'm gonna to start to lay down some reference lines from the edges of my house, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start at my far left edge, right here, the or the edge of my cabin, and I'm gonna go ahead and click one time, and then I'm going to just specify a direction, okay? So I'm just gonna click down at the bottom, and I'm gonna hit escape. And notice that this line that I had just created is as long as you could physically see in AutoCAD, okay? So that's going to be an example of a ray line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that command by hitting the space bar, and I'm going to draw a ray line at all of the different uh, major boundaries of my building. Okay, so the first one is going to be, uh, yeah. Is it possible if you can change your line color to other? Can't see the red? No, no, no. Okay, sure. That's fine. Yes, you could you could change the background, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it black. I will change this. Is white a lot easier to see? Yes. Okay, I'll change this to white. Or actually, I'll change this to yellow because we're gonna end up drawing our elevation in in white. Okay. 
Is that better? I know these projectors aren't the aren't the greatest. That actually looks white. It actually looks that looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, we're, what we're doing is we're drawing our different ray lines that are kind of our, our major uh, cabin boundaries. Okay, so by cabin boundaries I mean where the building is actually turning and creating uh, different segments of the cabin. Okay, so from there I'm going to go ahead and type in ray again. I'm going to continue what I was doing by creating these different outlines. Okay. And from there, I have my four major edges of the elevation, okay? Now, if I go back down to the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and type in, let's see, construction line. So if I type in just C-O-N, you'll notice that it says construction line, and then in parentheses, it says ray. Now, the difference between a construction line and a ray is that a ray will go in only one direction, whereas a construction line will go in both directions, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on construction line and then down here somewhere at the bottom I'm just going to kind of pick an arbitrary point. There's not really uh, an exact location to where you need to do this. But I'm going to go ahead and draw my line and click and I'm going to draw that in both directions. Now they should have actually done that a little bit differently. Maybe that's the wrong command. I'll come back to that in, in, just, in just a second. Okay, so what I've drawn is I've drawn a ground plane for my ray line. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to act as the ground plane where my building is going to meet the ground. Okay, so right now we have a floor plan which, is, which establishes the boundaries of certain elements uh, of our cabin. Okay, so we know where the edges of our walls are. We know where things like our doors are. We know where steps are and we know where windows are. What we don't know is the height of all these things. So now that we're creating the elevations, you're gonna to start to think about what your cabin looks like in another dimension, okay? So right now we know what our cabin looks like basically uh, in plan from four feet and lower, okay? Because that's where typically uh, the cabin or the floor plan is cut from. But everything above that, we don't know what that looks like. We don't know what the roof looks like. We don't know how big or how tall our windows are, etc. So this is gonna be the time where we're gonna be determining that information, okay? Based off of one, what we have in the floor plan and two, what we kind of found for our inspirational images, okay? So when I analyze this floor plan that I've created here, I have a couple things. I have my little patio which you can tell is actually five steps up from, uh, from grade, okay? I have some smaller windows and I've actually created some larger, what I'm gonna call storefront windows. So they're kind of larger windows, kind of like this, okay? So what I'm doing with, this, uh, with these areas is I'm kind of maybe you know, making a focal point of these two corners, okay? I haven't drawn the interior spaces yet, but what this will end up being is this will end up becoming the master bedroom over here with another uh, bedroom off to the, or a small bedroom off to the side and a uh, living room over here and a kitchen over here, okay? So I have that in another file. I'll bring that up later. But for simplicity purposes of just drawing the elevation, we only need to know what's on, we only need to know what's on the exterior of the building, okay? So let's start to draw some of these, uh, these different elements, all right? So I'm going to start by drawing the doors and the windows in some of our, in some of our walls. And then lastly, I'll come back and I will draw my patio and my steps. But by this line right here, this, this ray line that we're, that we're created, we're gonna assume that that ray line represents the ground plane inside of our cabin, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna change my layer to the south elevation layer that I created, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and type in PL for P line, and I could start to draw some of the different shapes that we're creating, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start from this corner down here. So I'm starting to move up towards the roof, and the question that you're gonna ask yourself is, is how tall are some of these elements, okay? And I've actually, I actually made some L or some changes to this floor plan today. So I'm kind of just shooting off the hip here, but we can kind of break this up uh, how we wish, okay? So I'm gonna assume that I have maybe a, a sloped roof at the top, which we'll look at here in just a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and draw this to be, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say 12 feet tall, okay? So I'm gonna go, let's go 14 feet. I'm gonna go 14 feet up. 
All right, so that's gonna be the top of that space. And for now, I'm not gonna draw the slope roof quite yet. I'm actually gonna draw it as if it's a flat roof. And then I'll go up and I'll go over and make some edits here in just a few minutes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over as if it's a flat roof for this particular segment. Maybe this drops down just a little bit. So we'll say it goes down two feet. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and go over. And then if we look back here, we have another little segment of this house. So from there, I'm going to go up again, but maybe I go up three feet. And I'm going to go back over and then come back down, okay? So you're looking at this different, this P line that we just created, that kind of represents the outer perimeter of our, of our elevation, okay? So we've determined a couple things. We've determined the outer, uh, extents of our building and we've also determined uh, the heights of where our roofs would be okay right now the heights that we're showing we're assuming that the roof is flat at this point okay so I don't know what roofs you guys have but I'm gonna kind of do a scenario where the roof is is flat and I'll also do a scenario where we have a sloped roof okay I know at the beginning of the semester I told everyone to do a sloped roof so we'll go ahead and do both scenarios okay and then from there, I'm going to go ahead and use the, uh, the line tool, and I'm going to draw my line that goes all the way down. So that's going to represent this portion of the house right here, and I'm going to draw another one right over here. Okay, so those are gonna, these, these three rectangles are going to represent the three segments of this elevation that we're working with. Okay, we have segment one, we have segment two, and we have segment three. Okay. Actually, one of them is just a little bit off. Now that I can see this, let's, let's move this guy over. Okay, so I'm going to go click on that on that uh, P line. I'm just going to move that over so that it connects with my line that my my ray that I just created. Okay, so that gives us the outer perimeter of our elevation. So let's start to look at a couple more a couple of the elements that we have on our elevation. Okay. Looking at this little area over here, we have a couple windows, okay? So what I'm drawing here, or what I'm assuming thing, or assuming these windows to be, is a larger storefront style window, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my ray elevation and I'm gonna draw a few more ray lines so that I can translate this down to my drawing below, okay? So I'm just clicking on all of the different elements of this window. Okay, so here I have a post, a corner post that represents the corner of that storefront. Here I have kind of a middle support, like one of these. This is what this is actually exactly what you're looking at in this elevation. And then you have another uh, support over here on the left hand side. All right, so I'm going to assume that my glazing here, and let me go back to my south elevation. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this glazing is near floor to ceiling glazing, okay? So I'm gonna say maybe it starts at, we'll say a foot, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the line command and I'm going to hover my mouse over the edge of my, of my building over here. I'm gonna go up one foot and I'm going to draw a line all the way over to the edge of my window, okay? So I started over here, which is gonna be the edge of the post and I drew that bottom of that window all the way over to the edge of the window that's shown in plan. Do we all see kind of how that correlates between the two? Is there any confusion for anyone? Would it help to go backwards a little bit? Okay, if anything is ever confusing, just let me know so we can, so everyone understands. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, so let me delete these ray lines right here and let's go back just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in ray and I'm going to draw a ray line from all of the different elements that we see in the floor plan. Okay, or all of the different edges that we would have. Okay, something that would actually represent a line in elevation. Okay, so I drew, let me change my layer. Sorry, I always gotta forget to go back to your layers. So I'm gonna type in ray and I'm gonna draw a ray line. Going a little too quick. I'm gonna draw a ray line. Come on now. At all of my different window components. Why does it keep doing that? Okay, so I'm going to type in ray and I'm going to draw a ray line at all of my different window components. All right, so here's my post. And we have one for our center mullion. 
and one for our outer mullion. Okay. So those are going to be re those are going to represent all of the different vertical lines that we have in our floor plan. Okay. So what I as I mentioned earlier, go back to my south elevation layer. I'm going to go ahead and assume the bottom of my window is starting at a foot. So I'm going to go ahead and start at grade. Grade is represented by this line. Okay. This ray line that we created. And I'm going to go ahead and go up one foot and draw a line that represents the bottom of my window all the way over to the far uh, left-hand edge of this mullion. Okay? So that's going to represent the bottom of our window. All right? So just like the mullions that we have here, we're going to go ahead and assume that the bottom mullion, like the one that we see down here on this window over here, is also two inches thick. So I'm going to go ahead and offset that line two inches. Offset, OFF, distance, I'm going to say is two inches, and I'm going to offset that bottom line. All right? And then from there, remember that these yellow lines are just ray lines. They're not actual lines. We still need to draw in uh, the lines that represent the boundary of our window. Okay? So I'm going to type an L again for line. And again, just like we did when we were drawing the outer extents of our, of our roof structure, we have to make a determination of how tall these windows are, okay? So right now my windows are three feet wide. Well, let's just say that I wanna have, uh, I'm gonna say that I wanna have three three foot by three foot um, or rows of grid windows. So that what that means is if I'm gonna have three rows of three foot windows, my window is gonna be a total of nine feet tall, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line up nine feet and then I'm going to go ahead and continue that line over to my uh, the edge of my of my building, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat the line command, and I'm going to trace over the ray lines to determine uh, my mullions or to create my mullions, okay? All right, so draw a few more lines. Bear with me. There's going to be some repetitive parts of this of this lecture. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the uh, the outer edge of my of my window post. I'm going to offset the top line two inches. Okay. And then from there, I can start to create some of the different elements of my grid window. I mentioned that I want to have three foot squares. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two lines that I just created, and I'm going to copy them down three feet. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move down three feet. All right. I'm going to take those same lines. I'm going to go ahead and copy this down three feet again. OK. So if we go back and we remove these ray lines over here, you'll notice that we're starting to get what we have as our grid window. OK. And then I can spend another couple minutes. I can just uh, I can use my trim command trim. I could select my window unit that I've created, and I could start to trim out these different lines that will make our grid window look just a little bit better. Okay? See how I'm doing that? Oops. I'll go back and fix that in a second. Any questions so far? Good? All right, bear with me for just a second. Let me just do just a little bit of cleanup. Okay, so we're just going to clean up some of our mullions just a little bit. Trim command. All right. So here we have our first window that we've created. Okay. So we have a little window here. And I'm not going to go through and make you watch me do this one. But this I'll do it here in just a second while you guys are working on yours. I'll kind of add some more detail to mine. All right. But creating this would be the exact same way. Ask, you're going to have to ask yourself, is what might be different about this window than this window, okay? And start to determine what some of the different heights are for the different elements in your house, okay? Over here I have just kind of a standard residential window, okay? 
think of maybe standard residential windows uh, as having about a three foot sill height. Sometimes that varies and if you want to make that change, you are certainly welcome to do so as you're, you're designing this cabin, okay? But I understand that some people will not really know what some of the standards are for some of these different elements. So standard windows generally have about a sill height of about three feet, okay? Let's do one more uh, little piece of my elevation and that's going to be my door, okay? So again, I'm gonna go ahead and change my layers to my ray lines and I'm going to type in ray and I'm gonna draw a ray line down that represents the outer perimeter of that door, okay? And then from here, I can go down, change my layer to the south elevation and we know that this door is six feet wide but now you gotta ask yourself, how tall is that door, okay? Typical door is about seven feet tall, but if you wanna you know, maybe make it a little bit more contemporary, that door might be eight feet tall, et cetera. That's, anything taller than that is, is pretty abnormal, but I'll let you guys make that determination, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and type in PL for P-line, and I'm gonna start right here at the, of where this ray intersects our ground plane, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and draw up We'll say eight feet, and then I will go over to the right to intersect the, this ray line that we just drew, and then we're gonna go ahead and go back down, okay? And if I delete these two ray lines, you'll notice that we've kind of determined the extents of where that door will be, okay? From there, you can add a couple more details. Maybe you have a frame around your door, okay? So I just offset that line two inches, and Let's draw another line here in the middle. Go ahead and connect to our midpoint. And maybe that represents our, our door, okay? You may wanna add some more detail. You might have windows in your door. You could have a variety of different things on what that door might look like, okay? But is everyone kind of understanding the concept of using the ray lines to kind of determine the boundaries uh, and the relationship between our floor plans and our elevation? Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, so let's look at uh, a couple more elements of our floor plan. So we've created our door and we've created this window, okay? Uh, from here, let's look at a couple of the other elements of our floor plan. So we have outside of our house, we have this patio. And then from that patio, we have five steps that go down. So we have to assume that in our elevation that we're gonna have five steps that goes down to our new ground plane, okay? So originally we, we, we said that these two ray lines or this ray line that we see here in, uh, well, I guess on the screen is, is white. We're gonna assume that we're actually gonna be able to go down five steps, okay? So I'm gonna draw a couple more lay li or our ray lines that represent the edge of our stairs, okay? So R-A-Y, and I'm gonna draw those down. And I'm even gonna draw a couple that represent our handrail. Okay, so I'm clicking on the starting point of the ray line and I'm just giving it a direction. All right, so up here, uh, we've shown our steps as being 11 inches wide. For those of you that don't know, the standard rise and run of a step is an 11 inch tread and the typical rise for a step is seven inches, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my southern elevation that we have here. And I'm going to draw in a few steps. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in line, and I'm gonna draw the first top step right here that goes from boundary to boundary of each of my ray lines. And then I'm gonna go ahead and offset this down seven inches, all right? And if you look at our floor plan, we have one, two, three, four, five steps, okay? So I'm gonna offset this line down one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's gonna represent our new actual grade, okay? So our, our actual raised elevation of where we're walking in our house will actually be, you know, whatever that comes out to, about four or five feet above what grade actually is, a, a knowing that we have five steps that lead to our cabin. Now, every one of your cabins might be a little bit different. You may not have any steps at all, so you may not need to take this step. But I know looking at a lot of your floor plans last time, I think a lot of the people have maybe a couple steps that leads up to a porch, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another ray line to represent my new ground plane.
Okay, and let me go back. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my handrails. Okay, so I'm gonna have a line and I'm going to go ahead and just trace over these two lines that we've created right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. This is gonna represent my post. So a typical handrail is about three feet tall. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go up three feet and I'm going to go over and connect this back down over here. Okay, but as we know, our handrail continues to go up to our porch, okay? So from there, I'm going to go from the top of this handrail, or actually from the bottom of where we would be standing on our porch, and I'm going to go ahead and draw another line up three feet. That's going to represent the top of our, of our railing, okay? And let me go up and draw another ray line to represent the edge of my porch up here and that will help me determine how far my hand railing is going to go okay so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my hand railing down here and then I'm going to draw it and connect over with the edge of my porch and I'm also going to give it a post over here on this side let's offset that maybe two inches okay we'll offset the top railing a couple inches as well and then depending on what kind of railing you're looking for you would go through and you would add in your different pickets and the different elements of that make up your railing okay so I'm not gonna make you watch uh, watch me do all of those different things but let's go ahead and delete actually let me draw in the other part of the railing just real quick and then we'll delete our rail our ray lines and we'll kind of determine what our current cabin looks like. All right, so let's delete these ray lines. Okay, so we have something that looks kind of like this. So now that I've gotten rid of the ray lines, remember that they're non-printing layers. I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, another layer for my ground plane. All right, so where's my new layer button? Let's go ahead and type in layer. Let's add a new layer, I'm gonna call this south elevation ground and I'm gonna make the line weight for this so that I could see it a little thicker on my screen I'm gonna go ahead and make this something a lot larger maybe like 0.40 and I'm gonna go back and using that layer that I just created I'm gonna go ahead and create my new ground plane okay that's gonna look something like that all right, I'll make some more edits in just a second so that we actually can see the thickness of that line. Come on now. Okay, so we would have the top. Here's gonna be the edge of our stairs. We can start to make some additional edits to our, to our elevations. I can add the top of my porch that comes over here. Probably extends just a little bit longer and then it comes down, okay? And what we're gonna do from there is now, now that we know that this is gonna be our new ground plane, okay, so we've determined that the ground plane is at the bottom of the stairs, we can then from there extend our old lines from our old ground plane and make them lower, okay? So that actually tells us uh, where the bottom of that, uh, our building meets the new ground plane, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Good, okay. So I won't make you watch me draw all of these other elements. I'll continue to do that in, in just a few minutes, okay. But as you move forward with creating your, your other elevations, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your original XREF like you've done right here, and you're gonna go ahead and go CO for copy, and we're gonna copy it over to the side. All right, we're gonna go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees, okay, so go ahead and Rotate that 90 degrees. Uh, let's move this down so that it lines up with our other elevation. And you're gonna go ahead and do this for all of your different elevations, okay? So I'm gonna copy it over, copy it over again. Let's rotate this one another 90. Oops, wrong 90. Okay, so here's gonna be the back of my cabin. And let's rotate this one so that we get the last edge of our cabin. 
for the last side. Rotate this one 180 degrees. And we'll move this up. Okay, so from there you can see that you'll be able to start drawing all of your different ray lines and start drawing all of the different uh, elevations of your cabin. Okay, any questions about that so far? Doing okay? All right, so that's going to be kind of our brief example on how to draw elevations from our floor plans, okay? Now let's go to Canvas and let's look at how we can start to get some depth in terms of how we plot these elevations and what each of the line colors mean, okay? So right now we have all one layer, okay? We have all the white layers. So we plot this, all of the line work is going to look exactly the same, okay? We're not gonna have any, uh, we're not gonna have any multitudes of line weights, okay? So if we go over to what we're calling exercise 22, creating elevations in AutoCAD, you'll notice that I've given you some different layers for different elevation lines. So what these mean is, what each of these layers mean is they kind of have a different, uh, the thicker lines are gonna represent items in your elevation that are gonna be closer, whereas the smallest lines like this gray uh, this gray elevation line are going to be things that are really far back or really fine details in your elevation. Okay, so literally in my office, this is how we do our elevations. Okay, so I would go open up my my elevation. I'm going to type in layer. I'm just going to create a few of these layers for you. All right, we're going to add a new layer and we're going to type in elevation dash blue. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and make this blue. Hit OK. All right, let's create a few more. What we're going to do is we're going to want to go ahead and create all of the different elevations that we've created here or, or that I show here. OK, so the next one is going to be uh, magenta. So I'm going to create a new layer and call this elevation magenta. And we're going to change that line to just as it says in the name, we're gonna change it to magenta. Hit okay, and I won't do all of them here, but I'll just do, uh, let's do maybe two more. Let's do cyan and let's do yellow. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create two new, elo or two new layers. We're going to rename this elevation dash cyan, and we're gonna call this one elevation dash yellow. Okay, so we'll change the colors to their right colors. Yellow, okay, and we'll change this to cyan. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, what each of these lines mean is that kind of represents a depth of field, okay? So if we go back to our elevation, or if we go back to our floor plan, let's say that our cut plane for our floor plan, let me center this, let's say our elevation cut plane is right here. Okay, so we're gonna draw a line right here. Well, as your elevation cut plane projects out into your floor plan, you're going to encounter certain elements of your building uh, sooner than others, okay? So your largest line that you would be creating would be represented by this first segment of building, okay? Not necessarily the items that are in the, in the immediate foreground, okay? Um, just because you want to put more emphasis on the actual building itself versus the, uh, the elements that are actually in front of it, okay? So uh, the line that is represented by this item right here would be probably like your pink line, okay? So the pink line is going to be your thickest and, most, and your boldest line, all right? And then your next line, which is going to be uh, blue, which is represented by half a millimeter, would be your next object a little bit further back. So your elements that you're drawing over here in this area would be your blue lines. And then if you go back even further, you're gonna have, uh, you know, you're gonna have line words back in this corner that's either yellow or cyan or red or just depending on how much depth you have in your elevation. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that will kind of help you determine what color to make certain elements inside of your your elevation. Okay, so let's look at what we have right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna trace over these for now. You can also uh, change them should you wish, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and type in P-line, and I'm going to draw, as this is the first 
and most prominent side of my building. I'm going to go ahead and draw that line right there. I'm going to go ahead and change this to blue. All right, I'm going to go ahead and type in line, and I'm going to make that this roof right here and down. Okay, and then our next color is going to be, uh, I'm actually going to go to yellow. I'm going to skip cyan because we actually make a fairly big jump back there to this element right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to elevation yellow, type in P line again, and I'm going to draw the outer edge of this building. Okay, so when we plot this, which I'll do in just a second, you'll notice that this part of the building has the thickest line weight, then this part of the building has the next thickest line weight, and then this part of the building has the least thickest of line weights. Okay, so there's actually some prominence in the different parts of the building, okay? So I won't do all of the little elements uh, right now, but you can start to think of some of these other pieces kind of the same way, okay? You wouldn't actually draw all of your door in pink as well. Uh, when I talk about these different uh, major leaps in color, they're usually represented by the, the boundary of the building. You're probably gonna wanna step down uh, when you're drawing the, uh, the windows and the door frames and the door, you would use a line that's probably about a quarter of the line that's represented by the edge of the building, okay? So, for example, this door might be something like elevation cyan or something like that. When you actually plot your, your drawing, you'll get a, probably get a good, a, a good idea of what some of those lines actually want to be, okay? I'll help you with that. It's not super critical for this exercise. Uh, I'm not gonna dock you points if you're uh, if some of your elements in your elevations aren't the correct line weight, but I'm just hoping to kind of get the kind of the initial process started of understanding why you would choose one line over the other when you're drawing an elevation. Okay. Um, any questions about that at all? Yeah. Can we just like uh, instead of redrawing the most of the house, like most mm -hmm. of the elevation, can you just draw a line? You could, you could, you, you could do that. You could also select the line, and you could just change the color. Whatever, whatever is easiest for you is is fine with me. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and plot this real quick. All right. And so the first thing that we're going to do before we plot this is we want to import uh, our pen settings that we created from last time. Okay. So you guys should have last class you should have exported a uh, a pen file, a CTB file, I believe they're called to both your thumb drive and also to the computer. Well, as we know that these computers wipe themselves out at the end of the night, so if you go in and you try to find that pen, uh, that pen file today, they won't be there. Luckily, we saved one to our thumb drive, okay? So if we go up to the AutoCAD symbol and we go down to Options, okay? Under Files right here, I can go down to Printer File Support Path so I can click on this little plus sign, and then I can go down to the very bottom where it says Plot Style Table Search Path, and I'm going to also click on the little box, and then I'm gonna click on this link right here, and I'm going to find the new location of where my current pen style is located, okay? So I know it's in my thumb drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and find it in my thumb drive. So it's under Digital Tools, Spring 2017, under 13, uh, should be under 13. Let's see, why is that not coming up? Did I click on the wrong? Oh, that should be it. Did I, did I save it under the wrong one? Anyways, it should be under 13A. So I'm going to click on 13A. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to hit OK again. All right. So then if I go to plot, all right, I can go ahead and, oh, there it is right there because I selected the folder of where it's located. All right, so I can select my DVC pen style, assign to all layouts, I can go ahead and hit OK. And then from there, I can go to uh, plotter printer name, I can go ahead and go to Adobe PDF. Uh, I can go ahead and do window, and I can select um, I could select my elevation that I just created or multiple elevations or whatever it is that you're trying to plot. Okay, 
There's a couple things that I haven't quite determined yet, so I'm gonna go up to my pen style. I don't think I've assigned a magenta color, so I'm gonna go ahead and change magenta to a line type of solid, and I'm gonna make the line weight, I believe I had it, had it listed as one. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit less. I'm gonna make it 0.8. Okay, just make, make sure that, okay, good, good. All right, this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. I'm gonna center my plot. Yep, let's change this to portrait, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. All right, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. Okay. All right, so if you look at our elevation right here, I hadn't actually assigned layers to all of the different elements, but notice how this line is a lot thicker than this one, and this one right here is a lot thicker than this one, okay? So you can actually start to see how we're starting to get some depth. Sorry, let me just try to, try to zoom out. My zoom commands don't work here. Okay, but you can start to see how we're getting some depth to our elevation by giving those, by determining those different line weights, okay? Any questions at all? Good. I know it's a lot to take in. I'm gonna leave it at that for now, okay? I know you'll probably blaze right through it, but if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Let's take a 10 minute break. Let's come back at seven. Uh, I'll even give you a couple extra minutes today. So come back at 7.45, and then I'll work with you guys till the, for the rest of the class to start to get some depth to our, or to continue working on our elevations, okay? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that.